Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. As I've tried to demonstrate in my past videos, the Triassic was witness to an explosion in archosaur diversity, leading to a wide range of bizarre animals that inhabited all kinds of ecological niches. However, of all Triassic archosaurs, I think the Poposauroids are among my favourites. These Pseudosuchians were an incredibly diverse group, with genera ranging from small herbivores to large apex predators, with poposauroids probably being the most famous for developing true bipedalism and possessing anatomical features that strongly resembled those of the later theropod dinosaurs. Indeed, some genera were so similar to non-avian dinosaurs that they were initially thought to be among the earliest theropods and ornithischians. Despite varying significantly in outward appearance, Poposauroids are united by several shared anatomical traits, including elongated cervical ribs, tall neural spines on the vertebrae, a distinctly wide pelvis, and a lack of osteoderms in derived members of the group. These animals were successful and long-lived, first originating in the early Triassic and surviving until the end Triassic extinction event, after which point their niches were taken over by dinosaurs. The most basal known poposauroid is the genus Chianosuchus from the Middle Triassic of southern China. This 3 meter, 10 foot long animal was a semi-aquatic carnivore with several adaptations to a seagoing lifestyle rarely seen in Triassic archosaurs. The skull was elongated and narrow, housing thin blade-like teeth of varying size, while the tail was laterally compressed with tall neural spines, suggesting that Chianosuchus relied on its tail to generate underwater propulsion. Overall, the genus possessed a moderately elongated neck and only a very slight coating of osteoderms, which is unusual for a Pseudosuchian. The limbs were still rather large and well built, suggesting that the animal was capable of walking about on land with a semi-erect posture. At the time that Chianosuchus was alive, Southern China was a warm coastal region at the edge of a tropical sea, providing plenty of aquatic prey for seagoing animals. Indeed, this genus may have inhabited a niche similar to that of modern saltwater crocodiles. A slightly more derived family of poposauroids were the Tenaxoriscidae, a lineage of approximately six to seven genera of terrestrial carnivores. Many of these animals are known from very scrappy fossil remains, sometimes consisting of a single vertebra, but two, Arizonasaurus and Gtenicosauriscus, are thankfully known from more complete remains. These genera give us an impression of fully terrestrial animals with large sails present along the back, superficially similar to those of the Permian synapsid Dimetrodon and the Cretaceous theropod Spinosaurus. The creatively named Arizonasaurus measured up to 3 metres or 10 feet long, and unsurprisingly dwelt in the middle Triassic of Arizona. It was a carnivore with a boxy skull equipped with sharp knife-like teeth and would have hunted rhynchosaurs and dicynodonts by ambush. Arizonasaurus is known from a single relatively complete specimen that lacks the forelimbs, so we are unsure whether the animal was a capable bipedal runner. Its ankle joint suggests an almost erect posture, but the weight of the animal's sail may have pushed the centre of gravity further forward, making bipedal movement more difficult. Another genus, Ctenicosauriscus, from the early Triassic deposits of Germany, was somewhat similar in appearance, but possessed a significantly larger and taller sail composed of greatly elongated neural spines. It was slightly larger than Arizonasaurus at just over 10 feet long, and would almost certainly have been a quadruped, perhaps capable of occasionally rearing up on its hind legs. It is also important to note that this genus is one of the oldest known true archosaurs, hailing from the earliest Triassic, suggesting that these animals got their start in the Permian, but were initially rare within synapsid-dominated ecosystems. Other members of the family have been described on the basis of more fragmentary remains recovered from the UK, Russia, Tanzania and China, and were similar sail-backed predators of relatively large size. Following on from here, we come to the more derived genus Poposaurus, after which the entire clade gets its name. This animal is often placed in its own family, Poposauridae, alongside the somewhat dubious genus Dolchibrachium. Poposaurus itself was a 4 meter or 13 foot long carnivore that weighed in the region of 90 to 100 kilograms, that is about 200 to 220 pounds, and stood bipedally in a fully erect posture. 
The skull and teeth were superficially very similar to those of later theropod dinosaurs, and the genus was considered to be a true non-avian dinosaur until the 1970s, when its pseudosuchian affinities became recognised. Native to the late Triassic of the southwestern United States, Poposaurus also possessed greatly reduced forelimbs, a feature also seen in many bipedal dinosaurs. Although Poposaurus and early dinosaurs were both bipedal, the method of locomotion evolved independently in each group, with the most basal pseudosuchians already being semi-bipeds. The independent origins are shown through several differences in their skeletons. Unlike dinosaurs, Poposaurus has the characteristic crurotarsal ankle of pseudosuchians, usually associated with quadrupedal locomotion. Poposaurus also has a pillar erect stance, in which the hip socket faces downwards and is positioned directly over the head of the femur. In contrast, dinosaurs have a buttress effect hip structure, in which the hip socket faces laterally and the head of the femur is angled to fit into the groove, being superficially similar to the condition present in modern mammals. In life, Poposaurus would have been an active predator that hunted the large and confusingly named Dicynodont Eubrachiosaurus with which it shared its environment. The most derived Poposauroids were rather different from their more basal relatives in being entirely herbivorous, forming a clade that included both small beaked forms and the bulky quadrupedal and bizarre genus Lotosaurus. Native to the Middle Triassic of China approximately 238 million years ago, Lotosaurus was 2.5 meters long, or 8.2 feet, possessing toothless beaked jaws, a rather rectangular skull, and a pronounced sail running along its back. The animal would have been a low browser, feeding on ferns and tough plant matter in a subtropical environment with pronounced wet and dry seasons. Numerous Lotosaurus individuals have been recovered from a single fossil site in Hunan province, with multiple animals found alongside each other, possibly suggesting the genus was social and that the bone bed preserves the remains of a herd. Despite being placed in its own family, Lotosaurus is a very unique animal with no known close relatives, with its nearest cousins being the far more slender and bipedal Shuvosaurids. These beaked herbivores were inhabitants of the Americas during the late Triassic and superficially resembled both ornithomimosaurs and basal ornithischian dinosaurs. The most basal member of the group was the Argentinian Silosuchus, a slender bipedal herbivore with a toothless beak, the holotype of which measured roughly 10 feet long. However, other remains indicate that it could grow much larger. Most notable among additional remains was PVL2267, an isolated neck vertebrae initially misidentified as belonging to the large quadrupedal predator Saurosuchus. The bone was 20 centimetres long, while cervicals from the holotype were only 8 centimetres long. Using its more complete relatives to estimate length, this bone likely belonged to a Silosuchus that was 9 to 10 metres, or 30 to 33 feet in length. This would indicate that Silosuchus was among the largest terrestrial Pseudosuchians, and filled a niche similar to that of sauropodomorph dinosaurs like Platyosaurus. The two remaining genera of Shuvasaurids were both native to the late Triassic of the southwestern United States. Shuvasaurus and Ephegia were both lightly built, fast-running beaked herbivores that measured approximately 2 meters or 6.7 feet long. Shuvasaurus was described by Shankar Chatterjee in 1993, after it was discovered by his son Shuvo in the early 1990s. It was initially interpreted as a Triassic member of the Cretaceous dinosaur family Ornithomimosauridae, because it had toothless jaws and superficially similar appearance. Like Chatterjee's avian placement of the dubious Protoavis, the Ornithomimosaur placement of Shuvasaurus was greeted with scepticism by other paleontologists, and in their 1995 paper on late Triassic tetrapods from the American Southwest, Robert Long and Philip Murray considered Chuvasaurus to possibly be the same species as their new taxon Chattagia, which was based on ten postcranial skeletons that had previously been referred to the Rauisuchid Postosuchus. In the early 2000s, Sterling Nesbitt and Mark Norell prepared previously unopened jackets of an archosaur from the Whitaker Quarry at Ghost Ranch, which they named Ephegia in 2006. This discovery showed that Shuvasaurus was a Pseudosuchian, and that similarities between this animal and Ornithomimids resulted from convergent evolution, while demonstrating that the taxon Chattagia was synonymous with Shuvasaurus. 
Ephigia itself was a very similar animal, and in life was probably a skittish herbivore that dwelt in the same ecosystem as the massive carnivorous Postosuchus, and the common theropod dinosaur Coelophysis, both of which would have preyed on Ephigia. Indeed, in taking a trip back in time to the late Triassic, we would likely encounter all sorts of bipedal archosaurs that would have been very difficult to differentiate at first glance. Some would be true dinosaurs, while others would be more basal dinosauromorphs, while others still would be members of the various bipedal Pseudosuchian groups. It would only be if we had access to these animals' skeletons that we could easily differentiate them by examining their ankle structure. Poposauroids, then, stand out to me as a perfect example of the sheer weirdness and almost experimental nature of Triassic animals. Coming off of the back of the worst mass extinction in Earth's history, life had the opportunity to rebound with a vengeance, and that is why it is my favourite geological period. Sadly, the Poposauroids died out at the end of the Triassic, alongside many other Pseudosuchian groups, with the reasons for this still debated to this day. Thanks for watching, everyone. The next video will be an introduction to the Xenarthrans, South America's unique mammal lineage. See you again soon. Cheerio.